What is up guys? Today we're going to be putting on our new vertical doors, Lambo hinges on our 2021 TRX. So I'm going to kind of be giving y'all the rundown of the install of how to do it yourself at home. And here we go. Voila! Now I already actually got the install process started. So I started by taking all these clips out because you're going to have to remove the grill so that you can remove your fenders. So these little clips are right over here. You pop this top part up and then you can pull the rest of that out. After you've got all your little tabs out from your plastic cover up here, you're gonna gently pull up on your cover to release it and then these just pull that off. And then you can get your last couple of plastic clips right here and then this whole top portion piece will be able to come right off. so that we can get this out of the way and have full access to our fenders. So there's a couple 10 millimeter bolts, another couple clips, all the way down. So after this top piece is taken off, now we're going to be trying to remove the fenders. So you have all of these bolts up top here that all need to come out. But first, I found it easier to actually remove the liners first and get them out of the way. So we're going to start by taking the liners off. I use an 8 millimeter socket on all of these bolts all the way down. And then there are a couple... Christmas tree clips that I removed with a trim removing tool. So I'll just show you how to take those all out. And then there's a clip right there and a clip right there and then another bolt up there hiding. Get this last bolt out. It's there. So it's these clips. Sometimes these are just better off if you just replace them because a lot of times the tops of them will break off. And then there's one last one up here and it's harder to get to because it's in a recess area. And then, you just kind of shove these in. And it should just drop down and you can pull it right out. Like a that. So I will be removing these two bolts to alleviate this fender bracket since these can only be accessed from the front and I don't want to have to take out the headlight and a couple other things to be able to get to the front. It's just a lot easier just to take the two out from there. And then on the bottom down here, there are those two bolts that also need to come off. So on your TRX, you may have a cap that goes right here. I already had the cap off because they were starting to rub a little bit running the 37s. So I took the cap off already, liner out and voila. You have this one right here that also needs to come out and is accessible from down here. This OEM bracket will actually be cutting off in the install process, but that bolt needs to come out as well. that went to the headlight that was a screw and then that was a push pin and now I'm going to remove this 10 millimeter 10 millimeter 10 millimeter and a 13 right there so I'm going to start with a 13 because this is what I already have on here now on the driver's side there are a couple extra bolts on this side because you have the battery box on the opposite side one thing you do need to make sure is that you have enough slack in this crossbar to be able to pick up because 
underneath that 13 millimeter bolt that we just took out, you have to pick the um, rivet nut up over the top of your engine bay wall. Sorry, my brain is not braining today. But that was the biggest issue I was running into on that side was that you have to kind of do it with a little bit of a pry bar, have someone pick this up so that you can pick that rivet nut up and over the side to pull it off this way. So once you have all your top bolts out, then you can come to the front and give a nice little yank to the front of the fender. So like I had said, we already removed the two headlight bolts. You wanna make sure that this bolt is also removed right here in the side vent because now we're gonna be basically taking this whole portion of the fender and pulling out. So it's kind of nerve wracking because obviously you don't wanna break clips, but you kind of have to give it a little bit of a forceful, gentle touch. So essentially you wanna shove your fingies underneath here because there's clips here, 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 and here, all at the top that have to be pulled whoop, straight out. <sighs> Okay, so the last two bolts on the fender are right behind the door right here, and then there's a, another one up here. They are T27, and to access them, you just open the door, and there's one of them. Boom, right there. Okay, so the last bolt is underneath this cover. You just have to pop this up, and then there's another T27 bolt underneath this. And then that is the last bolt. Okay, so on the driver's side, there wasn't this other bolt in here hiding down there. So I gotta get that one out. So just remove this vent. There's a bolt here and here that go in those two clips. And then once that's out of the way, you can get to that one right there on the bottom of the headlight. All right, so now we're towards the interior door panel removal process. There are two little panels, one behind the door handle that literally just pops whoop, right out. So you got the top one right there as a 10 millimeter behind it. And then this bottom panel right here, pop that one off. Okay, and then there's two right there. And pushing the clip on her kit. While you're right here, you might as well just go ahead and take off the door kit. Okay, so you're gonna clip all of these off and you can take all these extra little zip tie do bobbies out to reuse some of these with the new zip ties because we want as much space as we can possibly get as far as slack goes. So I'm gonna pull as much slack as I can possibly get and then put new zip ties through these, if that makes sense. This one, I actually just unbuckled it from up here so that I had an, it literally just kind of like hanging because I'm gonna have to pull this one down too. And I didn't want that one to be stuck up there. <laughs> okay, so we took all the tape off. This boot is now free to move about the cabin with our slack that we now have created right here. Now we're gonna make a little baby hole right here so that we can cut this excess boot 
over here off. So you see your wires inside there. Obviously you don't want to um, cut them because that's never good. So now that we have our extra boot, that's what we're going to attach our new loom that was included in the kit to. We're gonna do the same thing up here, but we're gonna go ahead and take the boot off on the cab side. Alrighty, so we pulled this grommet back, this little white piece unclips from here, and then there is a top clip up top, and then two bottom clips down here on the bottom. Go down. Oh, for the love of Pete, who the hell is calling me? <sighs> okay, so after some coaxing, it should just slide out like this. Once you can get to the back side of this, you are going to want to unplug all of this and leave this side hanging down while we're installing hinges and all of the things. So you're gonna unplug this here brown one. One nice thing is that they tell you which side goes to what so you don't have to figure it out when you go to plug them back in. To deal with, come out. Same thing on the white side. Now with this one, you have to actually Take this piece, shove it out, and then pull this out, like the whole assembly, like this. That way you can get to this plug and then undo <clears throat> this plug from the little camera. This needs to come up so that they can separate. Goodbye. And voila. This is all hanging now. These can actually just be tucked back in here for now. And then you can get them, you can pull them back out. They just kind of hang out right there inside the hole. You can just like snag them back out, but that way they're out of the way. Cause the hinge is actually gonna lay right here. All right, so we have our harness. We got all of our extra slack right here. We got all the slack coming through here as much as we could possibly get to out here. We're gonna go ahead and leave this like it is. Oh, I didn't show this, but I cut this top portion off because we're not gonna be using it because this whole assembly is going to be actually shoved into that cab hole once we get to it, but that's not yet. So leave a little bit right here because this is actually what's gonna be coming up and over this, attaching to here. And then we'll be putting our loom here to here once we're to that spot. So now we're on the door stopper. I already went ahead and took out the 10 millimeter bolt that goes right here on the cab side and we're gonna take out these two bolts that go right here. Before you take those out, they, I took out one, two, three, four, five of these bolts here, there, there, there. You can keep going if your arm's not big enough to fit back here to feed this through the hole in the back. So I'm gonna go ahead and take these out now. Take those off. I'm gonna feed my hand back here and shove this sideways so that I can get to it right there. Hold it with one hand, pull it through, and take it out. Once that's out, put your holes or your bolts back in the holes, tighten them down. That's all we need from this inner panel. Okay, so right before you close the door, you got your slack. It's ready to go. You got your door panel back on so it's not hanging or in the way. Everything's clipped back in place, bolted down so that when we do our first test run of lifting the door, this is nice and secure. So now we're gonna tuck this in, gently close the door, make sure these aren't gonna be pinched, and then I'll show you the next step. Okay, so now I know this looks absolutely insane, but you do not want this door to move the second you take those hinges loose. So we have painter sticks with painter's tape around it. So as like a shim basically from the top and the, or the, sorry, the back and the bottom to keep that same amount of gap that we need, as well as all of the tape with the body line. So I know that everything lines up where it needs to line up and doesn't shift up, down, back, forward, all of the things. So once that is all on there, you are not going to remove the tape and open the door until the new hinge is fully on. With that being said, we now need to 
cut this old OEM fender mounting bracket off so that it's flush, and then we can start the install of our new hinge. All right, so once everything's taped up and you're sure it's not gonna move, we're gonna take out these two top nuts and then the bottom two nuts on the door first and then followed by the two bolts on the cab side for the hinges. We're going to reuse the nuts, the OEM nuts that go on the top and the bottom and the and there. You have new bolts. The two longer ones go in the top, the two shorter ones go in the bottom. A little bit heavy. Get everything lined up. Like I said, this boot's just gonna get squished, so. Ones to hold the weight while I tinker with fitment. Start our nuts. Now the nuts, you're actually going to want to tighten down first onto the door. But we want to get everything started before we tighten anything down. And then there's only one on the bottom. You will have an extra nut because there's a stud on the bottom that's not going to be used. 18 millimeter on the new bolts. And we want to make sure that the body of the hinge lays flush against the cab. It's kind of like hand tighten essentially because we're actually going to be tightening the ones on the door first. 13 millimeter. Okay, so we have our top and bottom and lower nuts all tightened down. We went ahead and tightened down the hinges on the side, all of us nice and tight. Now we're ready to adjust the striker. So this is a, I believe, 3 16 Allen right there. So obviously we see that our nut is already cracked loose. I just went ahead and turned this to barely touch the block. So before you put the hinges on, you always wanna make sure that that is actually loose, which it was, I just barely tightened it, but you wanna make sure that you have it not touching the block. Mine was like about right there. And then you want to essentially just tighten it down to where it barely touches the block. And that's gonna be your starting adjustment point. So once it barely touches the block, that's where you're going to take it out and then adjust the striker. Okay, so now we are just adjusting the OEM opening and closing of the door. So this is already way too low, I can tell. So we need to tighten that bad boy up quite a fair bit. One, two, we'll try that. Okay, already a lot better. Actually, that might be it. Well, that was fast. Just come out and in. Okay, well, there you have it. So then you want to tighten down your nut. So you're gonna hold back up on this so that your adjustment screw doesn't turn. This was a 14. And then we're just going to tighten it down so it doesn't move on us. 
All right. Now our striker is now out. Beautiful. I love it. The next one, I highly suggest having someone to help you because these doors are very heavy and it's very hard to open and close by yourself while still trying to wrestle with the shock that is going on up here. So I'm just going to say that right now. You're going to take this out. It is a quarter inch Allen head. Take it all the way out. And then I'll show you where you need to put grease and Loctite. On this beveled sleeve right here, you're gonna put grease all around this and Loctite on the threads. Be sure not to get grease on the threads, only Loctite on the threads. All right, so now that you're ready to install the shock, you need to grease this little bevel on this side of your shock, so this eyelet. This piece right here is actually going to fit into this rotating ball bearing yesterday munchie didn't know that it rotated and it was an ordeal but that's okay we're gonna put red loctite on the threads and grease like i've shown around this bevel to not kill whoever is lifting the door you want to have this all set up and ready before they're sitting up in the air with the door suspended so dad lift the door we're just gonna get this door yes like a lot. a lot more. You're very close, but keep going. Okay, and you're just about there. A little hair. Okay, hold up, hold up, hold up. I'm cutting her down. Okay, now you should be able to go down. You're not pulling it down. You gotta pull it down, bro. <laughs> it's on a shock now. It's holding it up. It. He's just like, <laughs> let go. <laughs> well, I would hope it would stay up or it's gonna fall on your head. <laughs> That, that was funny. <laughs> That's it. You're done. Goodbye. Can I go home? You can go home now. I'm cool. I'm going to go home. Cut my chicken. <laughs> Once you have your shock on, you have everything tightened, make sure you grease everything because if you don't, it will void your warranty. And that sucks a lot. So now on this bottom piece right here, they have these little pins that you have to push in. Now there are two holes, one on this side and one on this side. You have to feed it through the bigger hole. So on this one, the bigger hole is thankfully on the outside. And I'd like to start it first with pliers because it says to beat it in with a hammer, but it's kind of hard to do that when it's just like not started at all. So I'm going to get it started with some pliers once I have it all lined up. <laughs> so now that we have it kind of started, we can now Push it in. Okay, so now it's coming out the other side. So now I can put a punch on this side and tap it, tap it, tap it the rest of the way. I think that should be good. All right, we're in. All right, so now we're going to be doing our adjustment from left to right. So we're going to pull the door out, push it up, and then we want to adjust the play so that we don't have a whole lot of play at the top. So pull it out, bring it up, and we're going to alleviate this wobble. Like you don't want all that wobble. Wobble baby, wobble baby. So the same one that you used for this Allen is the same size you're going to use for this side. So this side you're going to have come towards this plate to stop it. Stop. Get some help. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to barely get it right there touching this plate and we want to make sure that we don't have a whole lot of play back and forth when the door is up in the air. What you want to do is you want to grease the knob that it's going to slide on. So we're going to grease that knob as well as the backing that it slides on behind the hinge. We're going to go ahead and get this loomed, but this is the routing of how it will go in there like that. I didn't film this because I felt like I, there was it's pretty simple. You throw the loom on. So this is the extra piece of loom that I had. It comes in the kit. I used the extra piece 
that was from the other side. Like essentially this was just cut in half and it was the perfect length for what I needed. So I put the loom on and then I threw electrical tape over the entire outside just to keep everything nice and firm because this is a split loom. So I didn't want it coming out or showing anything bare. So I threw tape all around it, taped up this end that's gonna be put into here. And now I'm gonna be basically using my Dremel to shave off this outside edge so that this connector will fit through the cab hole. So I've done this mistake a million seven thousand times now. When you're connecting this, make sure you route it over the hinge. Once it's over the hinge, now you can connect everything. Start with the middle one because it tends to be the biggest pain in the butt. There it goes. Just one right in. There. Okay. Brown goes with the brown. White. Keep the white. Tug test. Make sure they're all solid. And then feed it through your hole. What is it here? I'm just gonna shove it in. All right. Now. This grommet is now going to be your new door grommet. So you have a split cover, goes in and around to hold it in place. And then you kind of want to push up a little bit on it so that you get a nice, good, tight fit on it. Mark where your hole needs to be and it clicks to make a starter of where you need to drill your hole. Ta-da! Alrighty, so we have our wiring. Ran through there, ran through there. Everything's good to go, nothing's pinched. We got enough slack when the door is up. Got our cover on, tightened down. And now our fender bracket. I went ahead and put it on, there's a hole that's behind here and the supplied bolt that goes in there. Put your clip on this side, it needs to face in so that when you put your fender on, it'll go in the front. And then you can tighten your bolts in the front right there. Now we're ready for fender shaving. Yay! So I had a little bit of a cheat code because I talked to the installer over at Vertical Doors and got some photos from them on where they did their cuts in the fender. So I just mocked up on here with the same measurements that they gave me. Essentially, I just came down about a finger, come over and leave about another finger distance, make a relief cut, and then come over. So you're basically going to be making this little angle at the top vent part and coming off at this second vent part. So that is a template of what we'll be using to cut out the fender. Super hard to see, but we do have enough. It doesn't rub. It's actually this little piece. So that's how much clearance we have, which that should be plenty. Because we'll actually have a, a rubber boot that, well not boot, but a rubber seal that goes on here. And so that'll hit on the seal, but that should be good to go. Next, we're gonna add some felt on the inside right here on the loom so that the felt rubs against the wrap instead of the loom because we don't want it to rub on the wrap. And 
that's all she wrote, folks. We got her done. Just a couple little things I gotta put back in. I gotta put the liner back in, the front pieces back in, the plastics, but that is how you install some new vertical door Lambo hinges. And I hope this video made your life a lot easier than what mine was putting the driver's side on. So, just trying to help y'all out here. But I hope you enjoy them. Don't park under things that are very low ceilings because you're gonna mess up your doors. So yeah. Toodle McDoodle bros. Enjoy.